Yeah, um, okay. So this was a bit uh, last minute, but um, we've prepared a little spreadsheet um, which goes through a few of the options that you can, you can have for a Lightning Wallet. Uh, and it kind of uh, gives a little bit of information about how you might decide you know, what, which one you might want to pick and, and why. Um, <clears throat> so the first one we've got here is, is Moon Wallet, which uh, I think was the first suggestion. Um, it's made by a company called, well, I know it's, you can get it from this website, moon.com, or you can get it from the App Store. Um, and this is a wallet that was kind of primarily focused on having a, a nice, simple user interface, but it's still um, non-custodial. Um, and another thing that they focused on here was making sure that, well, making sure that if, if, you ha if, you, if your pri private key on your phone somehow gets stolen, like someone hacks your phone or something like that, um, that hacker has one key of two, and the other key actually is on uh, Moon servers. Um, <clears throat> but at the same time, you, this is fully custodial because they also give you a backup, and that backup actually has both keys in it. So, so non it's non-custodial. Yeah. It's yeah. Fully non oh. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, my. <bad. laughs> um, and I, I think it's a really interesting uh, security model. There um, is kind of trying to protect. Uh, the funds, your funds, from accidentally someone stealing your phone and, and hacking it. Um, and, but at the same time, they, uh, they don't, they, the, the company themselves, they only have one key, and that key is not enough to, to, to control your wallet. Um, and, you, and your app has one key, and together they work and do the, the payment. Uh, and they also give you a nice PDF file, um, which you can download, and a, a, a key that you need, to, you need to back up. Uh, and with that, there's there's actually a script that you can run a program and it will sweep your funds to another Bitcoin address. So you, at any time, if the company disappears, if the software doesn't work anymore, you've got the script, you've got the uh, PDF file, and you've got your key. You run the, run the command uh, and it will sweep it to an address of your choice. Um, so one of the things when doing a little bit of testing uh, I noticed that the fees on here is a little bit undeterministic, and this is um, because of the fact they're trying to focus on uh, making the experience really fluid. Uh, and what they're doing here is they're effectively subsidizing uh, the, the, tr the opening channel transaction at first. Uh, so if I were to send you uh, Bitcoin from my wallet to, to yours, you need this channel set up, uh, and you don't have one. Moon is going to open that channel for you, uh, and they're going to cover the cost of that, but then they're going to take that back, the cost of that transaction. Uh, when you start making payments, they're going to take it out as fees. Uh, and so what you might find is the first couple of transactions you make or receive might have a, a, few, a, a higher fee than you'd like. But after that, it's pretty, pretty cheap. Um, another thing to keep in mind is it is open source, and that's really important. Um, somebody asked, uh, you know, what's the security model of, of these uh, device, uh, these these ap applications? Well, uh, it's true that the user interface might be lying to you. What's what you're seeing is uh, might not be d the same as what it's actually doing. Um, but at the same time, th these uh, these transactions are multi-party transactions. If I if I'm sending you a hundred satoshis um, and <clears throat> and the software decides to multiply that and make it a thousand satoshis. Well, the other guy, their software is like, most likely they're gonna be a different software, but if it's not, whatever. Uh, when they receive it, they're going to see uh, a thousand satoshis because we're doing this together. So we're gonna know something's up. The only, yeah. Um, so the next one here is uh, Phoenix. And uh, this is a, also a, a wallet that is designed to be, be simple uh, and fast. Uh, the, there's a little bit of a different model when it comes to fees. The first payment you receive has to be over, I think it's like 12,000 sats. Um, and the reason for that is they're going to use some of that, that money to open the channel and they're just charging you that upfront. Um, less than that, like, like succeeding with 10,000, they charge a 3,000 fee. For the yeah, they charge a 3,000 Satoshi fee. Um, and I think, yeah, maybe they, maybe they only require 10,000 Satoshis for the first uh, payment. Um, and that's, that's not payment going to them, that's payment that you're receiving the 10,000 Satoshis, and 3,000 of that is going, to, going towards on-chain fees and, and basically the, the, the actual 
infrastructure costs. Um, the backups on here are not as, um, they're, they're semi-trusted in that um, they give you your, 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 uh, a, you know, your, your 12 word or 24 word mnemonic, which is your backup for an address. Uh, but that, that address actually doesn't hold the Bitcoin yet because your Bitcoins are in a channel and they don't give you the keys for that. Um, but what they do is they give you this, uh, this backup file, which is called a channel backup. Uh, and with that, you can basically force close the channel, kind of so submit your, um, your, your contract and close the channel and take the money out. Where it ends up, you have the, that's the, what you have the key for. Um, so yeah, they, 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 ha they have a copy of the backup. You can also, I think, get your own copy of the backup. Um, sorry. But what's really good is they got upfront freeze fees. Uh, and there are some privacy um, trade-offs that were made on this as well. Um, <clears throat> it's interesting. They've used this feature called trampoline payments, which is a way to kind of, when you're making a payment, what, you need, what software needs to do is it needs to find a route from me to you, for example. Um, and it might go through three or four different people before it actually gets there. It uses, say, 10 channels as part of that transaction. Um, for your mobile device to have to learn all about the whole network and then find the appropriate route, it can be quite costly and expensive. It might take up the battery quite a bit. Um, but what you can do is you can take a sample of that, that network on your phone and you can sort of say, okay, we'll send it to this person and, and, and bounce it through this channel and this channel. Uh, and that gives you some nice privacy um, upgrades here because um, you send that to async and async will actually do the, the routing for you as in between the, the, the checkpoints that you've said, it's going to um, fill in the blanks, make them connect to each other. Um, and so they're doing most of the hard work but you're giving them a few hints, so that way they don't know where the final payment is actually going. Um, they just know the first, the first checkpoint that you're sending it to, actually. Um, <clears throat> so for right now, the trampoline payments is, uh, is a protocol which isn't really being used by many nodes today, and that's why it's a bit of a trade-off right now. Um, because async, are probably going to be the only ch checkpoint that you can you can suggest. They're going to know where the destination or where that money is going, which node is it going to, or who are you paying. Um, but they don't know their identities, just the wallet ID of, of the wallet. Um, and that is there's a promise for that to get better. Uh, hopefully in a year, I I, I wouldn't be surprised uh, as more people use that same techno same protocol. Um, <coughs> So there's this uh, lightning, there's this, there's this wallet called uh, Zap, uh, and it's made by um, Jack Mathers, right? Or his team, uh, yeah, the Strike guys. Um, but this is um, not a, uh, this is not actually a mobile wallet that runs on your mobile phone. This is for people who have their own nodes. Um, <clears throat> so if you, I have my own node at home, and um, this will remotely connect to it, and it can connect over Tor, and it can connect over the, the uh, main, main, main websites as well, like over the, net, over the, the main internet. Uh, why we, might you want to connect over it, uh, to it via Tor? Um, <clears throat> if anybody's snooping, sniffing my network and I'm connected to a public Wi-Fi, for example, um, somebody might figure out that my phone is communicating with this server at IP address one, two, whatever it is, right? Um, with uh, the Tor network, that is more of a privacy-focused network uh, communicating with the node over this network is a bit slower, but you get a lot of privacy in that nobody really knows where my server is, and that's really nice. Because uh, <clears throat> obviously once you've got the IP address, you might get the location, you might decide to come at my house. Don't want that. So this also uh, works on Android and iOS. It's non-custodial because it just controls your own node, and that node is theoretically, well, it should be non-custodial. Uh, and it's open source. Um, there is this column here um, also I've, I've actually put a link to, uh, Wallet Scrutiny. Uh, this is a website, there is a website called WalletScrutiny, I think, .com, 
Let's just double check the... Yeah, walletsgrouptome.com. And this is a, uh, there's, there's a... There's a bunch of people who are basically evaluating the source code of these uh, software and looking for bugs, looking for vulnerabilities, deciding whether it is custodian or non-custodial. Um, and they, they're, they're letting you know, like, yeah, this is a good one, this is a bad one. Um, and you can only do this if the software is open source. If it's open source, they can look at the code. If it's not open source, they're not really going to be able to, they're going to tell you, like, it's not open source, I don't know if you can trust this wallet. Um, there's no need for backups because your node is doing all of that. Um, one nice feature of the Zap wallet is, before you make a payment, it does probe the network using your node and it tries to estimate the fee before you pay. Uh, and it's got the maximum amount of privacy because, again, you're, you're running your own node. Um, next one here is Blue Wallet. <clears throat> and Blue Wallet is a custod custodial wallet. That means that they are running the node that has the, um, the Bitcoins on it. And you are, this is by default, um, you're connecting to their node. And uh, basically, it's a bit like a remote control, similar to Zap where it talks to that node and says, right, make this payment for me, uh, receive this payment for me, create, create an invoice for me. Um, what's interesting about this is that the software that does all of this, they've made that open source. And you can actually run that software on your own node if you want to. Um, and so that might give you the ability to, say, become a custodian for your own family. Like, you can install this on your node, and then you, you can tell your family members or your friends, like, install this wallet, point it to my node, and uh, you know, you'll, be using, you'll be using my node, and my node will hold all your money, but this is, this is, this is the protocol. Bit of trust there, right, between you and your friends, so you don't want to do that with like, random nobodies. But uh, yeah, so trusted, uh, trusted backups. Yeah, so what you're given as a backup when you, when you do this is, uh, the LND hub or the, the, the server will give you a key and that key represents your account. If you lose that, uh, if you then uninstall and reinstall or create, uh, get a new phone and install the same app, it won't know of all the Bitcoin that's on their servers, which is yours. So you need this key and this key is kind of like a username, but it's, it's also unique. Um, and so if you, again, if you're running it on my server, then you, know, you also need to know which provider you're using and what is the, uh, the key. Um, in terms of privacy, Blue Wallet has full visibility of everything that's going on because it's their node. Um, and they've kind of, they've done like a user account type thing where you know, you've got a user account on their server. But it's not by email address or anything like that. So you've got no personal information still. Uh, the next one I've got here is Zebedee. And Zebedee is a lightning wallet that's focused with integrating games and gaming communities. Uh, they heavily market that, you know, with, with this Lightning Wallet, you can um, play games and earn sats and, you know, and a lot of game developers are, are, are focused on it. It gives you some nice uh, features like you can create yourself a, a tag like at Gamer1 um, and people can just send you the, 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 the Lightning from that Gamer tag and it, all that works. This is their own system. It's their own thing that they're, they're building. Uh, and it's a private thing. Um, so it's not custodial. It's they, they hold the, the Bitcoin for you, and it's not open source either, which is uh, not great. <laughs> so you don't really know what's going on in the background there. Uh, in terms of backups, there's no backups, but you have to create an account, which usually means you give an email, email address and a password, and you can um, do two-factor authentication. You can set that up as well if you want. Uh, and so if you uninstall the app and reinstall it, you just log in again with the same account. Uh, there are no opening channel fees or anything like that. So like that 3,000 that we were talking about on Phoenix, they hide that from you and they just don't charge you the fees. Uh, and they can do that because it's non-custodial, right? They, they decide themselves to make, take that loss on themselves so that the user gets a better experience. Um, and yeah, it has literally no privacy uh, and it's not permissionless. At any time, they might uh, decide not to allow you to uh, send your, your Bitcoins because it's on their servers. And actually, one thing, I, I, when I was playing with this, I set up an account, and I didn't verify my email yet. And then I went to make a payment, and it said, you need to verify your email before you can make the payment. 
And so that's what, that's what made me think about permissioning this. Um, there is this uh, Spark wallet, which is similar to Zap, um, which I spoke about before, but it works with a specific implementation of the Lightning uh, network software. If you've got your own node, you should be running C Lightning, uh, which was one of the ones that uh, was talked about before. Uh, and it only, only exists for Android, not for iOS, although I think they're saying that's coming soon. Uh, again, non-custodial open source. Um, there is no fee estimation feature like the, like the Zap wallet has. Um, so you're going to make the payment and you're going to find out what the fee is once the payment's made. Uh, but usually it's like less than a penny at all, all cases. So it's, I guess, not that important for some people. Personally, I like to see the fee, at least an estimate, as soon as possible. Uh, in terms of privacy, again, you're managing your own node, so uh, maximum privacy there. Then we've got, okay, so we've got the Electrum wallet. Uh, Electrum is uh, one of the one of those uh, Bitcoin wallets, which was like one of the first, uh, and you know it started off as an on-chain Bitcoin wallet, and they've uh, added support for creating uh, channels on the Lightning network. Um, <clears throat> it's it's a full Lightning node implementation on your phone, uh, and it's not very user friendly. It's kind of you know, it expects you to understand how Lightning works and you manage and you create channels and you make sure that you have enough inbound liquidity and enough outbound liquidity and you manage that yourself. Um, it only, looks like it only, uh, they only have an Android version, not an iOS version. But again, it's non-custodial. All, all of the stuff for managing the fees and managing the amounts is on the phone uh, and it's open source. Um, the backups, as trusted, yeah. So in terms of backups, uh, they are well. The the backups are on your phone. Um, I forget what. Well, there's no actually. Hold on, let me see. Ah, right. You get a twelve mnemonic, a twelve word mnemonic, uh, plus a channel backup file that you can save. Um, and so basically, it's the same backup system as if you are running your own node on say a Raspberry Pi. On there you also get 12 or 24 word mnemonic and a, and a channel backup file. Um, <clears throat> and the last one I've got here is uh, LN Tech TX Box, TX Bot, which is a Telegram bot um, providing you access to a custodial Lightning wallet service. Uh, documentation was a little bit hard to find. Um, basically like the GitHub repository doesn't really have a, a nice little spiel about what it is and how it works. Um, but I, I, I suppose with a bit more digging, you might see some blogs or something that really explain it. Um, it's not non-custodial, but it is open source. The source is there. I don't know how much I trust it again because I don't know if that's the exact code that's running in uh, Telegram. Uh, and there's no backups here, so it relies on you making sure that you have access. You've got your Telegram account. It's account based. Um, and I guess I haven't written anything about fees and privacy because I haven't tested this one yet. Um, so yeah, and there's, there's, there's a few more, but hopefully that gives you like an idea of what sort of things you might want to think about when you're um, picking a wallet. Um, <clears throat> there are trade-offs here. Um, and on this spreadsheet, I've also linked to some like blogs and some uh, podcasts, which actually where the developer has spoken about the technology, how it works. And it's kind of interesting sometimes to listen to what's going on behind the scenes. Uh, different ways that they're like minimizing fees, uh, optimizing how the how the system works without actually comp like doing, without not doing the Lightning protocol. Like you have to make sure that you're following the protocol properly. Um, but there are things that you can do on the mobile wallet side that maybe batches uh, open and close channels, for example, uh, closing channels. Um, if you do that, then you might save on fees on the on the main chain. Uh, or when you're creating a, an open channel, you know, like for example, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they, I don't know that they do this, but if Moon would, the, the opening channel uh, transaction, maybe they batch that with some other users who are also starting up uh, their own Moon wallet. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's what I got there. Um, any questions? Uh, yeah, yeah, on um, trampoline routing, other Either, if I'm not using trampoline routing, then I have to um, perform path finding to some node in that network. 
if I am using it, then I have to perform pathfinding to the first one in their trampoline. I have to do pathfinding between my node and the first one in their, like, tra of their trampoline nodes. So where's the efficiency going? Can you repeat yep. the question? Okay, so uh, the question was, if, if you're a normal uh, Lightning node, uh, when you're making a payment, it has to do pathfinding, it has to scan the network and find the most optimal route to the person that you're paying. Um, with trampoline uh, payments, it's, a, it's an optimization, and uh, yeah, so the question was, how, what is, how does it work? How is, what is the optimization? So, um, first of all, you get, you get a list of, so when you, when you query uh, the network to find out you know, what nodes are out there that you need to be, be mindful of, you just query for the ones that, that report themselves as trampoline nodes. Um, and so you get like, yourself like a list of, of random trampoline nodes and then you say, right, I want to make a payment and you create a route, but you don't know like whether these trampolines are really connected to each other. They're usually not, not directly anyway. Um, but you maybe make a path which is like four or five trampoline nodes long and then finally to the last person. Um, and when you do that, it's similar to, to one of the things I think we didn't really discuss uh, was how the one of the ways that Lightning Network preserves your privacy is it uses onion routing, which means when I create this path and, I, and I'm going to send this payment, I create a message that says, um, you know, send money from my node to your node, and then uh, another message that says, send money from their node to, 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 to this other node, like, you know, this, make a payment here, make a payment here, make a payment here. All of those are wrapped in single envelopes and encrypted. So the person who receives the packet, they can read only what, where they need to send their money. They don't see the full path. Um, so if you were to you know, offload the, the path finding algorithm to somebody else, they would see the full path and they would know who you're paying. With trampoline, you give, so you, 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 do, you, you pick two or three trampolines and the trampoline, first trampoline you send to, they, they know that the money is going to this other trampoline. But they don't know if that person is the receiver of the money they just, or, the, or if, if it's just another trampoline. So they'll create that path and they'll know that much of the path of, of the transaction. If you've got two or three trampolines in there, they're not going to actually know, none of them are really going to know where is, like, who is getting the money. Maybe the last trampoline might know, but then they're not going to know where the payment came from. So it solves the problem of making your, your, your path and who you're paying private, um, while also giving your, your, allowing you to off, offload some of the work to the other nodes. Basically, the trampoline node is going to be a big central node, right? So it's a lot easier to get your money to a big central node than it is to get it to a tiny node on the edge of the network. So, if you get it to that central node, then the central node can do the hard work of getting it to a small node on the edge of the network. Also, with Claire, you're, you'll be opening a channel with uh, a node run by the company that runs the Claire, which is Async. So, so you've already got a channel with them, so you're just sending the money to them, and then they will do all the complex stuff of getting it to the final destination. Thank you both. Yeah. Yeah. What's, what's with your pick, D? Everyone's D. They're, they're going to be ready. They're, they're, they're going to be deleted. There was how uh, myself and uh, Alex were, was working on. Well, we can actually. Well, we were, we were, just, we were, we were allocating like, to, to fill in this spreadsheet uh, who's going to do it. So it's only me so far. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, um, I think if, if you want a, like a really nice experience where, and, and you, you get to see all the fees up front, I really like Phoenix. Um, but with the, the fact that from reading their blogs and so on, they admit that they've made a couple of trade-offs here and there in terms of privacy. Um, if you're more privacy focused, then I think maybe Moon is, is probably a better, better bet. Um, because you're doing your root calculation on the, on the device, on your phone. And so they don't get to see uh, where it's going at all. Um, and also their backup, Moon's backup uh, structure, how they, how they set it up is really interesting to me. So I, I, I really like it. Um, 
So yeah, I, I personally like to use Moon, um, but I, I can see the appeal of using uh, Phoenix because it's, a, I think, a little bit smoother of a, of a user experience. And it's, and it's all open source. I wouldn't trust one that's not, and I wouldn't trust one that's custodial. And can I ask us to sort of stop for a moment there? Um, so uh, thanks, that's a really good uh, summary. <laughs> I'm thinking we because we, we're very short on time, unfortunately. In, in future, hopefully, we will have three hours, not two. But this session, we have only two. So I'm thinking it might be just the last five minutes, like five ten minutes. Uh, you might want to have a look at. Um, I just think it's maybe interesting to try uh, payments. It's the last slide I had on this. Um, if you haven't tried any of these things, uh, maybe. Maybe have a look now. So, for example, you could try pay like that Satoshi's place. Um, well, these are donations. This is kind of fun. Like you can donate to Bitcoin devs there. That's a if there's a bit like a whole randomly arranged list of developers. You can try and pay one of them. You can try try to feed the chickens, which is a really cool thing. But I think it doesn't maybe it doesn't work anymore. It didn't, didn't work last time I tried it. You can literally pay chickens with lightning payments, and the, <laughs> the chicken feed comes out when you see it on the camera. It's kind of cool. Uh, you could try bitrefill.com. That one is um, kind of cool. We've discussed it already. I think there's at least one um, employee of bitrefill in the, in the audience here. Um, and maybe things like uh, you can pay for gift cards. You can try paying the Human Rights Foundation. And let me just mention at the last point there, that looks like an email address, and so does that. <clears throat> we have something called LN Address. Now, it uses this idea of, sorry, I'll stand there, uh, LN URL, where you can actually Effectively, you're sort of paying a server which is set up to receive the payments. So if you, if you, if you go into your Lightning Wallet like Phoenix or Moon, and you go into the invoice uh, section, you can actually fill in that string, like human readable string, and make the payment to that instead of making the payment to, um, to this invoice that we've just been playing around with. So if you only want to try any of those now, or anything else, like Satoshi's Place, Please, uh, why not try that? Or, or just keep talking about wallets, whatever you want to do. <laughs> but we're going to be kicked out very soon. So. What's the um, from the big companies on the right? That's from Big Refill. Yeah, sorry, I didn't really make that very clear. So Big Refill, these are companies you can get gift cards for. Sorry, I keep saying yeah. These are companies you can get um, gift cards for from Big Refill. If you sign up with an account there, I think you just need a, an email. You can get lightning payments on there. You can even get one of these. Uh, LN URL addresses if you want as well, so you can get paid like that uh, on there. Kind of fun. So you're all standing there waiting for something, but I told you to just get on with it. <laughs> Do it, make a payment. I insist that you make a payment. Do it. Right now. Can I ask one question? Yeah, I know it's going to be gone after no period. No, just do it now. He's not, no, now. <laughs> well, I'll talk to you individually. Oh, okay. Although, we haven't got time. Do it now. I want you to do something. The whole room to make chicken work well. Yeah. Yeah. You can also use go to waxwingdonation.com there and you can get the URL or yeah, that's right that's that, yeah, so that one uses BTC Pay Server, which is another way of doing like yeah. Just go on our website and, and it'll be very easy for you to make a payment. Oh yeah, no, and is there any uh, thoughts of making you know how in the original banking sector it was gold when it's a bank you got a cash slip as a receipt for the gold? You know, is there any oh, right. um, idea in the Bitcoin community or with this no, would, would there be any? Would there, is there any incentive to make uh, to almost emulate the banking sector where it was? Yeah, yeah, you break certificates. For you get into, yeah. but would that just lead us down the same route again, kind of thing?